Дорогие друзья, уже не первый раз по благословению Хороша Индиан Самма. What they call in America an Indian summer is a wonderful thing. Breathing comes easily in the hills of New York. And here I mean not only the city, whose bird's eye view is well known to those in Russia, but the state, the vast region too, the lakes between which Chingachkuk once galloped on his stallion. The exuberant colors of autumn, they are so bright that you'll likely see nothing akin to them in Europe. And in the bosom of this pristine wilderness, your heart begins praying to God of its own accord, fluttering with joy. You can feel God's grace, which blesses the valleys and hills, the groves and thickets. This grace diffuses into the air itself. You know, my friends, directing my gaze upward to the heavens, almost every day I could see the caravans of geese, migratory birds honking across the sky. The golden grove has shed the conversation of its green tongue and quelled its birchen call. Indeed, there are birches here in America as well. And so, on this backdrop, in these grace-filled surroundings, I was able once more to enter Russian America, that hidden sanctuary of the Orthodox world. Let us not forget that Orthodoxy has been here for several hundred years now. Joining the Russian fleets and trading vessels, the travelers and monastics, the light of Orthodoxy entered in and continues to flicker mystically here. It reveals itself in incorrupt relics, in the blood of martyrs, in the private prayers of venerable monks, and in the lives of monasteries. Призвал Господь однажды сто ангелов к себе, по лесенке на землю отправил их с небес и принести оттуда. Мне пришлось посещать в эту поездку города Нью-Йорк, Вашингтон, Лейквуд. Over the course of my trip, I visited the cities of New York, Washington, and Lakewood, New Jersey. Here were organized for us meetings with our compatriots. It is wonderful to note that there is no longer any demarcation line between the flock of the Russian diasporan churches and that of the Moscow Patriarchate. I began my journey at a meeting with the parishioners of St. Nicholas Patriarchal Cathedral. It was very pleasant that Archbishop Justinian not only offered his undivided attention to us Muscovite pilgrims, but even remained for our evening, which was dedicated to a spiritual discussion on the life of the Orthodox Christian living in a big city. 
And of course, interaction between Orthodox people in New York or Washington or Lakewood is the principal spiritual fruit that we bear by our joint efforts. Спаси, помилуй, Господи, Отца моего духовного, На многое лето дай ему терпения и любви. Мне очень радостно здесь общаться с батюшками, многие из которых получив образование. It is a joy for me to interact with the priests here, many of whom, having received a theological education in America, diligently labor in their parishes. Their labors are complex ones, occupying all of their spiritual and physical strength. Of course, God grant that our interaction become all the more intimate, because we will always have something to share with one another. In this sense, I have always been impressed by the simplicity and authenticity of the clergy of the Russian Church abroad. I see bishops who humbly carry their own bags and suitcases, who are protective of their parish clergy, who act more like older brothers rather than superiors to their clerics. And of course, looking at our Russian batyushkas with the warmth of spirit that comes naturally to them, with their non-formal, gracious attitude toward people, it would be mistaken to think that everyone in America is happy. No, people weep and rejoice everywhere, in Russia and here, between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Undoubtedly, the soul first requires comforting, a tender word and encouragement. This is especially the case for those who, having only recently settled in a land unfamiliar to them, have more concerns than they know what to do with and are uncertain about what tomorrow may bring. Our Orthodox parishes become everything that they have to be for such people, a new home, a family, where the strong help the weak. And with this mutual support, little by little, the new arrivals, the novices, get back on their feet. One shining example of our unity between the Moscow Patriarch and the Russian Church abroad was made clear for me in the ordination of the servant of God, Vladimir Kaidanov. He became a cleric of the Church of the Holy Great Martyr and Trophy Bearer George in New Jersey, where he will serve under the supervision of the diocesan secretary, Archpriest Serge Lukyanov. Vladimir, whom I know well, was himself born in America and spent his childhood there, but received his education in St. Petersburg. A well-rounded and educated individual, he recently entered into a lawful church marriage, and the fates willed that he might return to the place of his birth, here becoming a priest. 
Continuing his education in St. Tikhon's Orthodox University, I am certain that Vladimir, combining within himself the mindset both of a Russian man and of one who knows firsthand about life on the North American continent, will be a particularly valuable laborer in the vineyard of Orthodox evangelism. How joyous it is for all of us to bear witness to this organic process, the interpenetration, the fusion of love, the interaction of living human souls that finds its place in service to the Mother Church. I would like to take this opportunity to thank Metropolitan Hilarion, who gave his blessing for the Kursk root icon of the sign to be present for the ordination. The icon was accompanied by the wonderful priest Nicholas Olhovsky, who fulfills the difficult obedience of always traveling with this icon which spends little time in the Synodal Cathedral in Manhattan, New York. Instead, spending most of the time traveling to all of the states of America and facilitating, by the way, the very important process of unifying the Orthodox. Russians, Greeks, Serbs, and all people who respond to the call of grace streaming through the icon. I was very impressed with my most recent visit to the remarkable parish of St. John the Baptist in Washington, where the wise and widely renowned Archpriest Viktor Potapov serves as rector. He is well known for his historic Orthodox radio programs, which aired on Voice of America. One could be taken aback by the abundance of parishioners in his church. On Sunday they hold an early liturgy in English, a latter in Slavonic. At the later liturgy, just as in our church of All Saints in Alexeyevsky Monastery, they come out with three or four chalices to commune the faithful. And when you immerse yourself in the elements of parish life, you are convinced with your own eyes that Christ is the true Father and Savior of all peoples. This is an amazing confluence of hearts and minds between those who were born in America and speak only English, or those who have only just arrived from Russia and still speak no English at all. It is a true kinship of spirit when the national and regional differences take a back seat to the image of God radiating within us all, in the elderly and children alike, and they feel themselves light-hearted, free and at ease, like flowers in a summer meadow. Such is orthodoxy. It does not, as you know, exterminate that which is unique in the individual. Quite the opposite, it gives everything true value and significance. At the same time, it unites diverse tribes and peoples in one harmonious family, which offers mutual aid, joy in interaction, and of course a desire to praise the Lord with one mouth and one heart. There is no readier example of this than what I mentioned, the wonderful parish of Father Viktor Potapov.
В этом году, дорогие друзья, посещая самый известный и прославленный This year, dear friends, while visiting the most well-known and illustrious monastery in American history in Jordanville, I was particularly impressed with its two cemeteries, the old cemetery and the so-called new cemetery, where is buried the pride, the pinnacle of a nation. Princes, our countrymen, cast out to the ends of the earth by the revolution, theologians, clergy. The condition of the cemeteries made me feel as though they were but awaiting the hour, concealed from us, of the coming of the Lord, when the tombs will open and the bodies will be resurrected. Silence and stillness reign there. Here too is the grave of the murdered Jose Munoz, brother Joseph, the guardian of the myrrh streaming Montreal icon, which has unfortunately vanished. And I get the impression, it seems, that all the more real is becoming the question of the glorification of this servant of the Mother of God, who made his entire life one of service to the grace-filled icon and to the people who made haste from the far reaches of the world to entreat mercy of the Theotokos for themselves and their neighbor. In any event, the person of Brother Jose demonstrates how the Mother of God chooses her servants and by what hidden paths orthodoxy is preached today, revealed in these wonder-working icons. Thank God, a copy of the Iveron Montreal icon now abundantly streams myrrh. This is an unimpeachable proof of God's grace, which the Church bestows as a reward for the preservation of the purity of orthodoxy and for leading a good life as disciples of Christ. Послушник и монах Оба с тайною молитвой Оба с четками в руках The Holy Cross Monastery – монастырь Святого Креста Holy Cross Monastery's primary feast day is that of the exaltation. It is a young habitation, currently located in a hidden corner of West Virginia. With a brotherhood of over two dozen, the monastery strikes at your very heart with its quiet and truly monastic hymns. Realize that the brethren comprise primarily natural-born Americans, although among them there is even a representative of the land of the rising sun. The services are performed strictly according to the Tipikon and are served in Russian style, with devotion, with zeal. The main, though still modest, church is warmed by the abundance of holy relics. And tucked away, like a squirrel or rabbit, in one of the stasidia that adorn the church in Greek fashion, you depart into a wonderful world of prayer, which, once begun, does not wish to stop. Services in the monastery are led by Bishop George of Mayfield. 
a natural-born American with a flowing, snow-white beard, worthy of the elders of the Old Testament. He is a kind man, calm, wise, meek. He received his education, like most of the clergy in America, at the monastery in Jordanville. He fulfilled all of his obediences and everything asked of him, and now, having entered the ranks of the Russian diasporan hierarchy, works little by little alongside his monastery's brethren, benefactors, guests and pilgrims in the formation of this remarkable, for America, world of orthodox monasticism. On this trip, I was able to concelebrate the service on the feast of the holy elders of Optina at Holy Cross Monastery. In the middle of the church stood a reliquary with the relics of Venerable Ambrose, Venerable Barsanufius, and all of the glorified Optina elders. On that same day in Optina, when the remains of the murdered brethren, the new martyrs, were recovered, we served here for many hours, during which I felt with my whole heart and mind that these young American monks are the true spiritual children of Optina Hermitage, disciples of the great elders of Optina Hermitage. Elders who even now pass grace on to those who strive to live according to their testament. In this sense are plainly evident the fruits of orthodoxy in America, which in the bosom of the Russian church abroad is most closely tied to orthodoxy in Russia. Not only connected, but its organic member. I am surprised, overjoyed, and grateful to God when I see 25-year-old young men born in America who have never encountered the phenomenon that is historic Russia, and yet nevertheless singing the service to the Optina elders, partly in English, with some elements, for instance, the magnification in Slavonic. I can see the tender and touching love with which the brethren approach the millennial heritage of the Russian Church as they familiarize themselves with the linguistic fabric of Church Slavonic which is new and unfamiliar to them, and how organically this takes place. Without getting long-winded, I would just like to say this about the atmosphere of family and genuine brotherhood there, which makes room for a kind-hearted smile, an edifying joke, and, of course, deep and delicate respect for the internal world of every human soul. Such an atmosphere cannot fail to make an impression.
Quite the opposite, it can immediately transform the heart of a person perhaps still unacquainted with orthodoxy. After all, America has traditionally been dominated by Catholic and Protestant confessions. And there are many people who sincerely believe in Christ as they know how, but are torn from the salvific bosom of the Mother Church. For this reason they watch and observe these things with wide open eyes and gradually access the roots of the true faith. And through these roots begin to draw the vivifying moisture of Christ's grace, which envelops in the fullness of its activity the whole world of Orthodox America. God grant that the monastery of the Holy Cross's external physical growth accompany the habitation's spiritual growth. I call on you, dear friends, to pray and actively participate in the completion of the monastic dormitory, which is growing by leaps and bounds. After all, it is very important for all those who wish to enter into the ranks of monastic laborers to have a place to physically abide. And the church, of course, with its limited parameters, no longer corresponds to the spiritual need. I firmly believe that the Lord God will multiply the number of good people thanks to whose diligence and support might be erected a magnificent church which will answer the genuine needs of Orthodox evangelism in this corner of America. At the heart of orthodoxy in America, especially in the 20th century, stand true spiritual athletes who gave all of their strength in sacrificial service to God and man. And so their work became all the more durable. The foundation was laid very deep. Among them were Archbishop John of Shanghai, Archbishop Averki, who was so close to him in spirit, and the first hierarchs of the Russian diaspora. One wishes that the remarkable fates of our countrymen would become better known in Russia. I have in mind here hierarchs, military men, confessors of the faith who laid their bones to rest here in America, but cultivated wonderful flowers of faith and love toward the Russian Church, which to this day have not withered in the persons of their grandchildren and great-grandchildren. God grant that there be no breach between these generations, because we live with a collective responsibility to do good, and only in the confluence of our experiences only through a living inheritance from the older generation to the younger, only by preserving the historic but ever-renewing wealth of Russian Orthodoxy can we withstand against the face of apostasy which advances on the entire world in seven league steps. In conclusion, I once more genuflect before His Holiness, Patriarch Kirill, and Metropolitan Hilarion, who take great interest in such contact, travel, and interaction between their clerics, where work and pleasure adjoin, and in which is glorified ultimately our Lord Jesus Christ, who pours out his bountiful gifts on the Church and who guides the ship of Russian Orthodoxy and the entire Universal Church to salvation.